Right, so in this video we're going to take a look at the creasing functions when used in conjunction with uh, control edges or inline edges uh, using Z modeler. So anyone that's familiar with traditional sort of subdivision modeling and, and their 3D package will be familiar with, with this sort of uh, method or technique or workflow. So basically rather than just using creasing or just using control edges, you, know, you can kind of use the two together to uh, control the surface and minimize um, the amount of uh, geometry so you don't have to use as many control edges you know you can do a similar sort of thing um, a lot of applications now have open subdiv built in and before that even they had cre creasing functions as well but the thing about open subdiv is it allows you can transport that creasing data which usually just will stay in, in the package that it was created in but with open subdiv now the very nature of it you can um, jump between packages and retain that information um, unfortunately ZBrush is uh, creased that uh, just remains in ZBrush you can convert it over to geometry I'll show you that later on but for the moment um, I don't know maybe sub open subdiv might be introduced um, in five who knows but sure, we'll get on here and, and get a look at it anyway so I'll just create a poly mesh 3D drag it out in the canvas T to go into edit mode down to initialize and um, I'm just gonna change a few settings here let's we'll say 24 and 8 doesn't really matter too much just for the demonstration here and make poly mesh 3d right so first things first you want to bring up your uh, Z modeler brush so B to bring up the brushes Z for the brushes that begin with Z and then M you can see down here is the hotkey but uh, I've obviously, as you can see, customized my interface, uh, your UI fairly heavily here. So I just have the Z model brush here. Uh, you could also set up a hotkey for it. So um, there's the brush there. What you can do is you can just uh, hold down Control and Alt and click on anything. And you'll see up the top here, that'll pop up. Press any key combination to sign it. And then you just press your hotkey and that's that. But uh, as I say, I already have it here. Uh, quick to hand in the interface right so Z modeler there's plenty of videos there even Joseph Trust now has a series on all the basics and, and all the tools I ran through as well in, in the what's new in ZBrush 4 or 7 that is a company or a documentation is a company or installed so you can have a look in there even so I won't go over everything bit by bit but I just wanted to mainly show using the creasing and I've waffled enough now so I'm going to get on with it so first thing I'm going to do um, now you have your targets here your sub object components so you have verts faces edges and depending on you know what you're hovering over uh, you're going to be affecting that'll be your target you're going to be affecting that uh, component so first thing i'm going to do is um hold down space or the right mouse button to bring up uh, this pop up here with all, all the tools you're going to need now it looks like there's a huge amount of them but um once you get going and you get used to what's what it's it's fairly quick to use I'm not using it that long myself uh, I still model a lot of stuff in 3d max because max's modeling tools are, are pretty much beyond reproach um, but I'm more and more trying to get into uh, using Z modeler here so we will go ahead and we're gonna start by insetting so inset and change this target from single poly to flat island and we'll inset here and you can hold, sorry, one more thing I forgot to do, I'm just going to undo that. Yeah, hold space again. I want to change this from inset each poly, which will do them all individually, to inset region. So flat island is the region. Now you can hold shift as well as modifiers when you're using a lot of these keys. So you can hold alt and shift to control and it does different things. It's all written down in the, in the documentation there. Or you can just play around or you get these tool tips to pop up as well so I'm just going to undo that and inset again right so if you hold alt if you hold alt you can paint uh, a white temporary polygroup you can tag these faces with this temporary polygroup and uh, effectively it will behave as, as uh, like a, s a single sort of a target so I want to um, I'll just add these ones in holding alt hover over a face space bar or right mouse button and inset and you want to make sure here uh, by default to be on inset each poly which will 
inset them all individually so in this case we want to inset the entire region so we'll just pull that in there and you see now it's automatically created a new polygroup for us so let's say for instance I, I want to use this as a polygroup island uh, target and I don't want to include these one thing you can do is a uh, handy tool spacebar again over a face polygroup and now if you uh, click on, on the polygroup that you want to copy the polygroup color that you want to copy so we click on that hold down shift and then we can click on these and effectively copy and paste this polygroup onto this so now we just have this as our target polygroup island so spacebar again on the face Q mesh polygroup island selected and we can just pull these in so now we'll use uh, we'll have a look at the creasing functions so you can crease edges and you can crease faces so in this case we have uh, some nice separated polygroup islands here that we can use to our advantage when we're creasing so hold space over a face crease polygroup island and you want to make sure down here this will be default to be all faces polygroup border so when we click any face here we're going to get a nice crease loop around the border of this polygroup you can do the same here and now um, your hotkey is D and shift D that's to go in and out of over here under the geometry rollout dynamic subdivision so that hockey is doing the same thing there so now that we have that creased I'm going to show you um, where you might want to use some additional control edges so you can see up here where the geometry is getting messed up um, I'm just going to shift D again or to go back now one other thing just to, not, uh, to, to explain this when you're using dynamic subdivision it's similar to traditional 3D modeling so you know when you use your subdivision algorithm in my case and uh, max would be turbo smooth you're still this is the cage y you can still manipulate uh, the points of the low poly cage whilst viewing the high poly mesh so you don't have to worry you can see here it's not displaying every single um, edge invert because it's been subdivided it's still just showing the control mesh so what I want to do here now is add an edge in here an additional uh, control edge or an inline edge so hover over an edge spacebar insert single edge loop and just click on an edge and then you can drag to position it so now when we press Z you can see it's helped but it hasn't quite done what we want so in this case we're just going to add another control edge just here and now you can see it's tidied that up and we'll use our creasing now on these edges here so instead of doing face creasing we're going to do edge creasing so hold space over the edge and um, crease and edge so I'm just going to crease these edges and these edges and now you can see that it's tightened up these but it's just mangalizing the geometry because we have a pole here where uh, these five edges are converging into this nasty pole and that's what's uh, that's what's creating that um, bad geometry there so what we want to do here is hover over an edge spacebar insert and we're just going to insert an edge down here quite tightly and uh, I'm just going to come over to dynamic subdivision and I'm going to set this to 4 now this type of thing as I say with the uh, flat subdivision modeling on flat surfaces square boxy kind of surfaces no problem but when you're dealing with curves you always run into this type of uh, issue when you try to um, 
you know take a chunk out of it like this cut a hole in it or just by the very nature of the curvature of the surface um, it's always been sort of one of those thorns on the sides of people modeling over the years subdivision modeling so you know unless you go really 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 close to it there you can still see it's there a tiny bit but it, you know it's <laughs> it's going to be at this distance pretty much you can hardly you can hardly even notice it you know so um i just change to let's see maybe toy plastic um, Just with the toy plastic material, or any material, you can kind of, it's like using a material in your 3D package with a high specular on it, so you can kind of see any um, dense or nastiness on the surface. Let's go back to uh, back to skin shade. Oops. Right, so that's um, that's pretty much it for adding, um, you know, inline edges to help. Uh, which are creasing when instead of trying to rely on just one or the other you can use both together so one more thing I'll do here is I will crease this edge loop here so crease edge loop complete I crease that and we crease this on the bottom just to give us a nice hard edge on the top and the bottom now once you you're finished, whatever you have all your creasing. Let's say you finish your model, um, and the creasing by its very nature adds extremely harsh uh, edges, sharp edges. So you can come down here to your geometry rollout crease, and we can still use our crease tools that have been in ZBrush a while now. Particularly this one here, bevel. So I'm going to turn on proportional width, which will keep. When it smooths out the bevel here, it'll keep the, the width. This is essentially turning your creases into geometry. So if I click bevel there, now you can see it's actually turned those creases into geometry. So that's one way, as I said earlier, <coughs> of transporting your crease. You can use and crease that, and then at the very end, um, converting that into uh, into geometry so you can export this and, and when you subdivide it then in, in your other package it'll be grand whereas obviously if you're using the crease and you could it, 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 it wouldn't it wouldn't transfer across so that is pretty much the and this new mass shiny is a nice material as well for just for uh, you know just to switch between while you're modeling have a look you can see there that you can see a tiny bit there in the corner that tiny bit of pinching but you know it's 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 fairly good for um look at how look it's a very low poly count now this isn't taken into account the amount of subdivision that's on it but uh you know the good thing is we didn't um we didn't have to do too much couple of inline edges here and there and a few creases and then just convert it across you don't have to convert it across if you're staying in, in ZBrush or whatever but um, it's just a handy thing to know so that's pretty much it um, I'm just going to leave it at that for this basic uh, video on using creases in conjunction with uh, control edges to your advantage alright cheers thanks good luck